Hello. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show clear. Nothing in the chamber. Nothing over there. Whole basement is empty. There's nothing beyond these walls but dirt. And I, I say that all the time because if I don't, some idiot's going to sit here and try and tell me what I'm doing wrong in my own house. They don't live here. They don't know the layout. Uh, yeah, it's happened several times. So um, this is my, what I call my Rock Ultra chambered in 9mm. It's a mid-sized gun. And if you're not familiar with arms core and their nomenclature, MS is mid, MS is mid size, which is commander size. So it's a 4.25 inch barrel. Um, it's got a bull barrel. Doesn't have a bushing, which does mean you have to have a tool or a uh, paper clip to break down this gun fully. Um, I bought this seven years ago. If you look on the side, it doesn't mention Rock Ultra, it mentions Tactical 2. This is what they used to call them, but this has all the parts and they've revamped their, their naming conventions. Uh, so their product line no longer has Tactical 2s, but they do have Rock Ultras. This is a Rock Ultra pattern gun. Um, this is my, my next carry candidate. I don't have rotations. What I do is when I when I carry a gun, I carry it with the intention that I'll be carrying it for a couple of years. Um, I, I frown upon kind of switching whenever you know. I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not treating this as if it was like some type of apparel. Um, uh, if you train with the gun for a long time and you switch up, you you're switching up to a gun that you're not quite familiar with. Um, yes, they might, they might have the same, uh, manual of arms, but each gun typically shoots different and, and I don't want to introduce any, anything that will cause me to, to not be able to protect myself when I need to. So I frown upon having like rotation, gun rotations. So if you're going to call my, my scheme a gun rotation, I don't rotate all that much. I don't have any type of plan. You know, like if I'm going to Sun, you know, if I'm going to a church or Sunday school, I carry this. Um, or if, you know, if if it's winter time, I carry this. I don't have any of those. You know, I carry one gun unless something happens with that gun and I need to return it to the manufacturer. Then I switch to another gun for a bit, you know, but that's only happened once in the last eight years so uh so yeah um right now i'm carrying the tp9 the canic tp9 uh elite subcompact um it's a thick gun it yes it's small in barreling but it's it's, it's quite a it's thick um what they did was you know canic kind of cheated you um, what they did was they took a their elite compact and they just kind of cut a little bit off the barrel cut a little bit off of the, the grip it's it's basically the same gun um, and then they have the nerve to call it a subcompact when I first saw that they were marketing that and I looked at the specs I'm like that's not really a subcompact but I, I bought it anyways and it's a it's a really nice gun I shoot accurate with it but the thing is it's like it's chambered in nine millimeter just like this one this one has less recoil because it's heavier, it's thinner, and yeah, it doesn't carry quite as many rounds, but I, I got 10 round max for this. I can carry one in a pipe that's 11 rounds. It's not all that much different from a uh, from a stock mechanic, so, um, unless you're using the extended mag, right? Uh, but still, it's, it's not all that far off, what, four off? Um, I just it's easier for me to carry this because it's slimmer um, I'm more accurate with this than mechanic and follow on rounds I'm more accurate with this than mechanic um, it just all the weight kind of makes it to where I can get I can do quick follow-on shots and be accurate at the same time uh, 
and I'm not, you know, I'm not a competition shooter or anything like that, but I'm kind of just throwing that out there. If you're comfortable with a particular gun, there's no reason for you to not consider carrying it because you, you definitely want to be comfortable during a shoot as comfortable as possible because your blood rate will jump up. But if you train with your gun, whether it's this or a canic or anything else, and become familiar with the manual of arms, become familiar with how to clear a jam, um, it's those things that the military taught me, you know, those battle drills, you, you, you do those battle drills so that when the shit hits the fan, you do it automatically because that's all you've been practicing. You know, you don't have to think about it. You just do it. It's the same way with, with, with any gun that you carry. You want to become familiar with it, but that stress is always going to be there. But if you don't have to struggle so much with getting follow on shots, because I, I can't do follow on shots with the Canik like I can with this gun because the Canik does have a bit of recoil that I'm, I've always had problems kind of managing. Uh, so, so my, my, my recommendation is for folks who, who are recoil sensitive or feel that they need to be able to get follow on shots in and not kind of be taking a second for every shot you know, and, and squeezing it off, you know, a criminal isn't going to wait for you to kind of dial in. He, he's going to be coming at you. So you need to make sure that those follow shots, you, you need to make sure that you're accurate for one, and any type of follow-on shots you shoot are meant to take him down. You know, you don't want to be kind of hesitating or kind of flinching and stuff and end up hitting a bystander behind him or anything like that. You know, so the more comfortable you are when you're not in a self-defense situation, the more comfortable you are, the more comfortable you're going to be when the shit hits the fan. Because you, you know, yes, your blood is going to be pumped and you're going to be stressing out. But because you've trained, and because you know the gun is easy to use, uh, you don't have to worry about, well, am I going to hit him or I don't know how to do this because you're unfamiliar with the gun, right? So, anyways, I took this to the range because. I had the intention of carrying this gun and replacing my replacing it uh, replacing my TP9 SC with this gun right so uh, earlier in the year I took it to the range and I shot some boxes of uh, JHP and self-defense ammo because I was having problems with my 45 my TSS duty my full-size 45 uh, trying to assess whether or not it was a problem with the gun, problem with the feed ramp, problem with the magazines, and it turned out all of my well, my issues were were related to ammo and certain prof, you know, bullet profiles. Uh, it didn't like, um, and that was with FMJ and JHP. So I was curious. I was like, well, I'm having problems with the 45. What about the nine millimeter? So I took the nine millimeter. I'd never shot like lots of JHP from before but I took Winchester silver tip and I took Browning uh, JHP uh, the Winchester silver tip is JHP as well um, and I took uh, some heavy shot uh, frangible SD ammo it ate it all no no there were no uh, there were no problems uh, there was one FTE one FTE with the uh, with the heavy shot uh, but I shot 16 other rounds through it and there was no issue. So, uh, I thought that I was okay. And so I took 350 rounds this week and with the intention of shooting it all, I only shot 128 rounds of it. Uh, but, um, of that batch, it was Norma 115 grain FMJ. Federal High Shock, 115 grain FMJ, Bellum, 115 grain FMJ, and Fiocchi, 115 grain FMJ. So of, of all of those, um, there were eight failures to feed and one failure to extract from one brand of ammo. Let me tell you now, it was not, it was not the magazines, it wasn't a feed ramp or anything like that. That's usually their first... The, Three things, if you ask those questions on, on, on the internet, 
three things are going to be recommendations are. Damn. Talk about having a brain dump. So, uh, extractor, magazine, or feed ramp issue. So, we will edit that bit out. <laughs> um, for me, it was Damo. And how do I know that? Because out of all of those brands, all of the failure to feeds and you know all of the issues were they'd only happen with that brand uh i had two different type two different brands of uh of magazines and it happened with every single uh, i have five of them uh, happened with every single one and it only happened with the top three rounds after that uh it, the mag the rest of the magazine ran fine and it only happened with half of that box of 50 so the you know after 25 rounds of the top three jamming, um, there were no issues with the rest of that box. So uh, maybe the feed ramp started getting comfortable with that that OGI because I did see a little bit of scoring on the on the ramp, um, but it's it's mainly because maybe the, the the projectile hole maybe it was more jagged than normal. Uh, as well, the old jive is, is more than likely different. And again, it just happened with that ammo. So, so I'm not going to blame anything else but the ammo, uh, especially since we've shot other SD ammo from it and there was no issue. Um, what else? The gun is super accurate. I shot between seven and ten rounds. Uh, 10 rounds is, I mean, 7 to 10 yards. Jesus. Um, I tend to focus on 7 yards. Um, 10 yards is what I call extending out a bit. Um, you're not going to see me doing a lot of 25-yard shots because that, it doesn't thrill me. And I'm there to kind of train. I'm not really there to have fun. Uh, you know, a lot of people do it because they, they think it's challenging for them. Um, for me, it does nothing. It does nothing whatsoever. Uh, because, for one, I don't bring man-sized targets out there. I bring targets designed for somewhat close-in shooting. Uh, and if I use those those targets at 25 yards, I wouldn't be able to see shit. Uh, will I get man-sized ammo? I mean, the range sells uh, range-sized targets. Um, but I, I typically don't it, that's not that's not me um, you know unless I have a man sized target the damn the, the front sight's gonna cover at 25 yards it's gonna cover a majority of the target um, I can't be accurate with it um, and if I'm gonna shoot out that far I have I have pistols as in you know rifles with braces um, that 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 can be better used um so that i'm not going to bring that that bit of pain you know with me you know even at 10 yards i was noticing that you know with me breathing it was it was wavering a bit um and at 25 yards when you're doing that it's not going to be a, a close you know it's not going to be something that oh well i'm, a, I'm an inch off no, it's going to be like maybe off the damn paper. So, you know, it's things that I'm pretty sure that if that's, if that's all I did, I I could do it. But from a self-defense standpoint, at what point are you going to be shooting at someone at 25 yards? Especially if you're if you're mainly focused on home defense. How many how many of you guys own a house where you're going to be shooting at someone that's in your house and you're in the house too? at 25 yards and, and and if you think about it if you shoot and you kill someone and they were 25 yards out uh, can you even see that they turn towards you or behind you what, what happens if you shoot them in the back um, and and even if you if it's a clean kill someone someone's gonna be wondering why did you shoot this guy from so far out 
the threat is no longer there whether he's coming or going you still have enough room to kind of do something to kind of you could run you could get behind cover and then start shooting and then you know if and by the end maybe he's closer but at, at 25 yards come on you know so it's like I, I that doesn't that doesn't fit my game plan uh And 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 no, you know I'm not training to uh, to to deal with an active shooter like some of these guys that you know that last guy I think he shot he shot a uh, a mass shooter from from far out. Um, yeah, I mean, not everybody's going to do that, and and you know the training that most people you know take that they're not they're, they're, that training is not designed to hunt mass shooters you know so it's like uh, for me it's only when i actually need it when i'm trying to get away from you know we're, we're in a mall or something you know with my family I, it, i'm there for my family that is it you know i'm not a coward or anything like that you know if i wanted to run and gun i i would i would have stayed in the army and did that you know no no not me you know, it's just, it's just, you can do that if you want, but it, 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 it's a good thing that folks have choices, right? Um, so, so, gun's accurate. I shot out the 10 yards, and at, initially I was shaky, but as I practiced, I shot 50 yards at 10 yards, and I did notice that I began to kind of get, like, accurate just as if it was seven yards and six and five yards i was actually able to place where you know bullets where i wanted to at 10 yards so it is a practice thing so so if you're going to be you know extending out there and you like to kind of hone yourself a little bit and try and adapt to a certain situation yeah because you know i could be wrong um you know i'm sitting here talk, harping about 25 yards and shooting people at 25 yards uh at some point, if a if determined the assailant is coming at you, he's not going to stay at 25 yards. He might be at 10, and you're not going to sit there and wait for them to get to 7 because that's what you've been shooting at the range, right? So 10 yards, he's not going away. He's still a threat. Take him out. And and if you practice for that, that you'll be you'll be somewhat prepared, right? So. Um, yeah, again, I had to be steady to get tight groups, but that's it to be expected, right, at 10 yards. Um, the plan is to eventually carry this gun. I do have, I have two holsters, but my intention is to try appendix. So I'm looking for some good holsters, and it, it's difficult because I'm like, is this, is this too big to, to carry appendix? But they do, you know, there's some places out there that make, uh, commander size holsters for appendix carry and again it's not it's not a it's not really a length issue it's more of a thickness issue and this is thin so it should carry well um, the only thing I have to worry about is I need to make sure that the safeties are protected so that it doesn't come off while holstered and if you can see here it's not gonna come off I mean this thing is pretty damn stiff that's the way I like them because uh you don't want this kind of it's probably easier to pop up which is probably not a good thing you don't want it coming up when you need it you know you're in the middle of a firefight and this thing comes up but it's 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 still positive and I haven't had a problem like shooting it at the range and it popping up uh, but my main worry is you're having it holstered, you're jostling around, and that pops off. So I'm more concerned about that. Because I don't want, you know, this thing has a very light trigger. You know, a good holster to have trigger protected. And plus, it's got a grip safety, so it's not going to go off unless you activate the grip, right? So there, there's some, some, some things in place to... Make sure that that gun doesn't kind of detonate in the holster, right? So, I just need to find a good holster. 
I want to find something that's reputable. I'm looking at Stealth USA. Um, and there was a couple of other ones I was looking at that after I did some research, people were not recommending. Uh, but even so, it's like I'm looking at at least 100 bucks. So the thing is, I got to make it count. You know, if I'm spending that much money on a holster, I don't want to do it and then find out, oh, well, I don't like appendix. So I just wasted a hundred bucks, you know, on a holster. And I suppose I could, I, I could, I could sell it if I, you know, if I don't like it. But, um, I wish there were like cheaper ways to kind of go about doing this. Uh, I don't, I don't mind spending money in preparation for doing something that's, you know, that's serious at heart but at the same time that's a good hefty big bit of change for you know you to try it once and all of a sudden you're like oh shit i don't like it at all you know but again i got you know if i don't like it i i shouldn't have a problem like selling the gun at a discounted i mean selling the holster at a discounted price right so um so there's that i have if i didn't say so earlier, I have currently 590 rounds through the gun. It is, I got all these spreadsheets and shit that I track. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. My sixth most fired handgun based on round count. I've fired my 22 TCM more. I would, I thought about carrying that because that's, that, that came with a nine millimeter barrel. Uh, but the thing is like, I'm thinking if I do get in a shoot, the first thing that's going to happen if I'm not, if I'm not dead is, is that they're going to confiscate the weapon. Uh, they don't sell this anymore in midsize and in, in single stack. Uh, but I will prefer to lose this gun than my 22 TCM because that's a that's a single stack as well and midsize and they don't they don't sell those anymore either. You might be able to find a place that has old stock or you find a place that sells used, but Arms Core does not that's not in their product line anymore. That gun or this gun. Uh, but if I had to lose any of my 1911s. It will be this one because I know I can easily replace it with something else, even if it's a different brand. Um, so that's that's the main main reason why I wanna I wanna carry this gun. Um, in my opinion, it's not the prettiest either. Well, out of all of them, it's my ugliest gun. So ugly Betty, here we go, We're going for a ride, right? <laughs> right. Bye bye.